Hello pilots and aviation enthusiasts. My name is Spencer Hammonds. I'm a local private pilot out of Angel Fire, New Mexico. And unfortunately we've had a few accidents out in this neck of the woods lately. And I wanted to put together this quick video telling folks about some of the intricacies about flying in and out of our area. Now a lot of folks come out here, they're wanting to mountain bike, they're wanting to ski, play golf, uh, fly fish, go on the zip line, do all of the things that we have to offer. But uh, whenever you come to the area, it's important to note that we are a high density altitude airport. Our airfield elevation is 8,380 feet. We do have a nice long 8,900 by 100 foot runway. but the area can be dangerous to fly into, especially if you've never flown into high density altitudes or if you have an underpowered aircraft or a variety of different factors. I am not an instructor. I just want to make sure that that's very clear. I'm just trying to give you the locals uh, thoughts on flying in and out of our favorite airport right here in the mountains of New Mexico. So we're going to start off with the geographic overview. And this is part of what makes it so difficult to fly in and out of here is that we are in a high mountain valley and you will see the valley with Angel Fire right in the middle of your screen. But what's important to note is here on the western side of the valley all of these mountains range anywhere from 11,000 feet up to Wheeler Peak which is the highest mountain in New Mexico at 13,160 feet. Over here on the eastern side of the valley uh, these peaks range anywhere from about 9,800 feet up to uh, a little over 12,500 feet. And so we have our valley right in the middle. And that creates challenges, especially considering that we have prevailing winds from the west. And we'll talk about this a little bit more in detail and why this tends to get people into a bit of trouble and part of the reason we've had uh, so many accidents here uh, in the recent past. Whenever you come in, the Angel Fire Airport is right here at the southern end of the Moreno Valley. And the valley floor is at about 8,300 feet. So as you're coming in over those mountains, you have to be able to get your altitude down to be able to get down into pattern altitude. Now we're going to zoom in on the airport here just to illustrate what the ter rising terrain looks like. And we'll be talking about this a little bit more in depth here shortly. But this is our airport. And as you can see, the rising terrain is all the way around the airport and there is not a whole lot of excess space to the left and right of the pattern. One of the reasons we've had so many accidents here lately is aircraft's inability to outclimb rising terrain. But the reason that that is so difficult is it's combined with prevailing winds from the west. Here we're looking due north and you'll notice that the airfield is oriented north-south. We have runway 35, runway 17. But our winds are primarily out of the west. And I had an instructor tell me one time, imagine that God is throwing a bucket of water onto the mountains from the west. What does that water do? Well, the water rises up over the top of the mountains. And then as it comes down on this side, it starts to decline. And this is the same thing the wind is doing. And as these winds come down the side of these slopes, they create downdrafts. And so uh, local pilots, we try to avoid this western side of the mountain valley because we want to avoid those downdrafts. The other piece of this is that whenever the wind does come across the runway, like I said, we have typically a crosswind and that flattens out across the valley. But the beauty is, is that once it moves across the valley floor, it starts to climb up this side of the mountains. These create updrafts. So many of the local pilots, we will try to hang out on this eastern side of the valley and see if we can get take advantage of these updrafts. When it, we've seen many times where these updrafts are in excess of 1,500 to 2,000 feet per minute. But likewise, the downdrafts on the opposite side can be just as large, and it creates a situation where your aircraft, if underpowered, cannot outclimb that. So we want to be always cognizant of which way the winds are coming and how the mountains will affect them. I do want to mention one more time, I, I am not an instructor, simply a local pilot flying in out of Angel Fire as my home base. Here we're looking at a sectional. Most of you will probably be using this as you're looking to plan your flight in. Now there is an RNAV instrument approach coming in from the north. and It comes in uh, this way over the town of Red River and brings you in the north end of the valley. I'm not really going to focus much on this. I'm really focusing more about VFR pilots coming into the area for the first time. There are a few things to consider whenever you're planning. 
If you're coming in from the west, most folks will come in over the town of Taos and follow the highway, as I've illustrated right here, move into the valley, and get into the traffic pattern. Folks that are coming in from Texas or generally coming in from the east will come in on the south side uh, through the valley and this allows you to maintain a lower altitude so you don't have quite as much altitude to have to lose to get to pattern altitude. A couple of things to note here is that there's this big blue area and this is the uh, wildlife area. We're not supposed to be flying in this area below 3,000 feet AGL. Now you'll notice by looking at the the map here, you're at about 12,000 feet anyway, so you won't want to be at 15,000 feet coming in over the top of this area, so it's best to avoid that. You'll also, as I mentioned earlier, notice all of this high terrain, and on the sectional, it does give you uh, uh, contour lines and information about the mountain heights. Again, the valley floor, 8380 is the uh, field elevation. If you come in over the tops of these mountains, you will have to use a forward slip most likely to get down to pattern altitude. And so using those suggested routes will save you a lot of time and effort if you're not familiar with how to do a very good and extended forward slip. Before we start talking about the departures out of Angel Fire, I want to talk briefly here about the rising terrain. Because the inability of aircraft to outclimb the terrain has been a key factor in the accidents that we've had here lately. As you can see, the valley is very narrow, and as I mentioned before, the valley floor is at about 83, 80, uh, 400 feet. Very high density altitude, and it's common for our density altitude to be between 10,500 and 12,500 feet, especially in the summertime. Here on the east and western borders of the valley, it's pretty easy to pick out where this terrain is rising. Not that big of a deal. You can see that coming. Uh, at night, that's a different story. Well, that's uh, a topic for a different video. But what's really important here is to note just south of the airfield, you have three little areas of rising terrain right here, here, and then yet a little bit further south. And Aircraft that are taking off on runway 17 have, this has been the traditional problem areas, is the aircraft's inability to outclimb these three areas of rising terrain. When you depart runway 35, just here to the northwest of the airfield, where the Veterans Memorial is, is also some rising terrain that's difficult to see from a, a map. However, it is fairly easy to offset just to the right once you take off to avoid that terrain. We'll talk more about this as we talk about each one of those uh, individual departures, but I just wanted to bring this up as a topic prior to getting into those. We're now going to talk about departing on runway 35. This is probably the most uh, commonly used runway departure for local pilots. And the reason is because we get to avoid the high terrain, and it makes it a little bit easier to avoid the winds. As I was talking about earlier, as the winds come off the mountains on the western side of the valley, they create downdrafts. And they flow across the valley, and then they create updrafts here on the eastern side of the mountain range. And so what we want to do is avoid those downdrafts on the west, and if we can, take advantage of the updrafts on the right. Uh, Whenever you start off at Angel Fire Airport and you're taking off, use the full runway as usual. Uh, it's high density altitude. And remember, try to use maximum lift flap settings. If you're not familiar with the term maximum lift flap settings, you can find that at mountainflying.com or you can just Google it. And the reason is, is that we want to be able to outclimb the high terrain that is where I just noted there, which is where the Veterans Memorial is, but we're also going to start turning off to the right as soon as we clear the departure into the runway. That allows us to parallel this road, which is an excellent emergency landing place. Uh, in this particular situation, there's not a lot of overhead lines to contend with. And then we follow up along the eastern side of the valley. And now what we do is we turn back into the wind. And at this point, our ground speed is going to be lower because we're going directly into the prevailing winds. Of course, this can be different on any particular day, but this is just what we normally see. But before we get too close to the western side of the valley, we're then going to start turning back to the south and continue to hug the eastern side, again, trying to maintain those updrafts if at all possible. By then, we should have sufficient altitude to be able to go out uh, the way shown here to the south and exit out the valley. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at this through the Google Earth uh, application. So let's look at this runway 35 departure from the Google Earth view. 
So remember we have winds coming from the west. We also have rising terrain right here that is not that easy to spot from here. If you were sitting on the departure and you'd see it, then of course you have the mountain uh, range that is very obvious right here. Remember, use your maximum lift flap settings. Should be in your POH. If it's not in your POH, you can find it online and figure out how to determine what that is. But now what we're doing here, we're looking at the departure end of the runway. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off. And after we clear the departure end of the runway, we're going to start a slight gradual turn here to the right. Remember, this is going to increase your ground speed because you will have a tailwind. We're pretty much going to parallel this road. And Remember, as we've talked before, the winds are going to be coming in from the west. And they're going to be a downdraft right over here in many cases. Wind begins to flatten out as it comes along the bottom of the valley. But then as it reaches this range here, it begins to climb. Of course, you have to be aware of how all of this interacts if the wind is not from the west for some particular reason. But now let's take a look at what this flight looks like. And you can see the terrain is not by any means level but it is uh, fairly flat and you could make a safe emergency landing. On this particular road, there are not a lot of overhead power lines crossing across the road either. So that gives you uh, a lot more opportunity if you needed to make an emergency landing. Right here, we're approaching Eagle Nest Lake and this is where we're going to turn to the left and we're actually going to slow down our ground speed a bit because we'll have our headwind. And that is going to give us the ability to make our turn back towards the south. Here we've made our turn to the south. You'll fly just to the east of the airfield and be able to take advantage of some of those updrafts and then exit out of the valley southbound. And now you've seen the runway 35 departure out of Angel Fire. We're now going to talk about the runway 17 departure. And unfortunately, this is where our two most recent accidents have occurred, primarily because of aircraft's inability to outclimb the rising terrain. I want to uh, emphasize maximum lift flap settings essential when taking off runway 17, uh, particularly if you're sl even slightly underpowered because of our high density altitude. And as I've talked about throughout this entire video, this is going to be a crosswind takeoff. And uh, coming here from the eastern side of the, I'm sorry, from the western side of the valley, you will have to contend with the potential for downdrafts. They're usually pretty level coming across the threshold of the runway, and then they start to rise up here on the eastern side of the valley. Remember, we're looking south in this particular uh, video. This wind direction from the west is prevalent all the way through the valley, even as you clear out of the immediate area. So keep that in mind. Don't let it catch you by surprise, because oftentimes those downdrafts can be in excess of 1,000 feet per minute, particularly on a gusty day. You do need to be very cognizant of the rising terrain, which is right off to the right-hand side of the runway whenever you depart. And it actually happens in two or three different segments, one here and then this larger area right about here. The terrain rises fairly rapidly, uh, literally 150 feet within uh, a quarter mile of the end of the runway and then about another 300 feet past that. Also keep in mind, your emergency landing spots are going to be very limited leaving out this direction. You have the road, but the road does have power lines that cross across that, and you have a golf course. But to get to the golf course, you still need to make it out at least a couple of miles from the end of the runway. In the last two accidents we've had, they have not made it more than about a quarter of a mile. So let's take a look at what this departure looks like. As we get to the departure end of runway 17. You can barely see it here, but the terrain is starting to rise a little bit off here to our one o'clock position and a little bit more. But as we start climbing through here, you'll see how quickly this terrain rises. Again, crosswind takeoff, most likely winds coming from the west. And if you don't have good lift at this point, you're in trouble because you start to see that the terrain is, is coming up quickly. And over here to the left, your emergency landing outs are minimal. Uh, this is a, a road that you could land on. You have the golf course, but it is a highly trafficked area. And it is not smooth. You will damage something uh, if you had to put down right there. As we continue flying out southbound, the terrain continues to rise before it eventually will drop off and allow us to depart to the southeast. 
I do hope that you have found this briefing helpful and that you'll be a little bit more confident if you decide that you do want to come into Angel Fire and visit us sometime. Again, uh, I'm not an instructor and if you are looking to come to the area, I would definitely suggest getting some mountain flying courses. New Mexico Pilots Association and Colorado Pilots Association, two organizations that I'm familiar with that offer excellent mountain course uh, instruction. There are also instructors in Santa Fe that can do a one-on-one -on -one course with you. Uh, if you want to come to the area, I'm always happy to talk to folks. I'm the only Spencer Hammonds on Facebook, so you can find me there. Or you can always email me at the address listed. And I look forward to speaking to you. And if you do come to the area, let me know. And if you have any comments that could potentially make this video better, I would appreciate those as well. Thank you very much, and thank you for watching.